want to direct your attention to one verse of Scripture. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 7 and verse 17, the Bible says, And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased. Why don't you read that with me? Say it with me. And the waters increased. Let's try that again. One, two, three. And the waters increased. The waters increased and bear up the ark, and it was lifted above the earth. Amen. Let's pray and ask the Lord's blessing on the remainder of our time. I know it's a little bit later than usual in terms of me getting the, the pulpit. If you'll give me just a little listening grace, I promise not to take too much of your time. But I want to introduce to you what I feel the Lord has spoken to me for our church this year. And I'm very excited about what God is doing and where God's taking us. Would you lift your hands and just ask, Lord, talk to us as a church in the area of direction. God, lead us this year. Give us direction. Guide our our, our efforts, guide our minds, guide our hearts, Lord. Let our minds be in you this year, God. Let our hearts be attuned to the voice of heaven to this year, God. Let our spirits be consumed with it's the it's it's time for eternity. It's dawning, and God, we don't have a lot of time left. Lord, help us to take that seriously, making every effort to 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 buy into and love and and pursue the vision that I believe you've given to this church in the name of Jesus. Lord, anoint me to convey it in Jesus' name. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. Before you're seated, high five somebody and tell them, I'm excited about 2023. Amen. Amen. I'm so excited. And I'll tell you what, I want to just take a few minutes here before I, before I have them put our slide up. Um, and I, I want to tell you kind of just going to talk to you today. It's more more vision casting than homiletic, you know, put together message. Uh, and, and I may talk a little bit, but I'll probably get excited. So when I get excited, that's just your cue to get excited with me. Amen. And so, but I just want to share with you today what I feel like the Lord is talking to me about for the church and for the direction of this year. Uh, was thinking through the past several years and where we have come from as a church. If you'll go back with me a few years, go back uh, in number to 2019. If you consider 2019 as a year individually, 2020 a year individually, 23 individually, 24, and now, uh, I'm sorry, uh, well, I skipped numbers. I'm going to do better. 2019, 2020, 21, <laughs> 22, <laughs> and then 23 this year. It's, it's five years that I'm kind of addressing and, uh, and then we'll get to 24 and 25 and the rest of those later. I'm always thinking about vision for the future, okay? Just cut me some slack here. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the last five years, if you would, this one in the last four years, just started contemplating. My wife and I started talking about where we have come from. And if you've been here any length of time, you know what I'm about to say is absolutely true, that we have begun to see significant growth and increase in our church here in the last few years. Amen. If you go back to 2019, anybody remember what we were doing in 2019? At this time, at this time, at 2019, we were in a school facility setting up and tearing down every single Sunday. We didn't have a home on Wednesdays. We were doing home friendship groups and those kind of things or connect groups, whatever you want to call them. And uh, we were at a place where we knew that the timing was now, we, we needed a facility of our own. And I won't go through the process of what it took, but God worked a miracle in 2019 so that by the end of July 2019, we had keys in hand. We purchased the four suites that were in, 101 through 104. Uh, we owned these suites, and we started transforming so that by November of 2019 and really January 2020, we had it in shape like what we wanted with the exception of a few additions here and there along the way. And so 2019 was a significant step for our church. It was a step of faith, but it was a step of increase for our church. And it was a momentum shifter. Of course, 2020 hit. Anybody remember what happened in about, I don't know, a month and a half or so, uh, 2020? The COVID hit us. It, it swept the whole world into a time of 
of isolation and, and we shut down and it was not what we had envisioned for our inaugural, uh, inaugural year. But, but when we came out of COVID, we came out, uh, I believe, in many ways stronger than when we even went in. And it was the hand of God that directed us. And we came back, and what we came back to is we started seeing numeric addition, that is souls, people, individuals being added to the church. So 2019 was a, was a, a, a building increase, if you will, a possessing the land increase. And then we saw, even in spite of adversity in 2020, we saw numeric increase. And then in 2021, it just kind of blew up on us. Uh, the numeric addition became something that was just so exciting because we saw, uh, I think, almost 40 people in that one single year were added to the church in one measure or another. And uh, I'll tell you, though, if you remember, we started something called Pray and Go. Turn to your neighbor and say, Pray and Go. We started that in May of 2021, and it was after that time of praying and going, which we'll, we'll talk about praying and going in a few weeks to do our annual relaunch because we shut down for the weather. I'm telling you, God blessed our efforts in that prayer and outreach initiative, and God started adding to the church. Amen. Numeric growth and addition started following that period of time so that the latter part of 2021 was a significant increase. In fact, why don't I just stop right here? If you have been coming to New Life after 2020, would you just stand real quick? If, if you have been coming after 2020, go ahead and stand real quick. And there's actually some missing today as well. And, and let me ask you this. If you have been coming uh, more regularly after, when did you guys start coming? You should be standing. Come on, it's after COVID. It's 2020. Making me look bad. If you have been coming more regularly and, and attending faithfully more than you have ever been attending in the history of your time at New Life, would you stand since 2020, 2021? Go ahead and stand with me. There you go. Amen. And then if you came back, if you had missed for a while, you hadn't been here for, for some period of time, and after 2020, 2021, you start, you return to the church after that time. Would you stand? Amen. Sister Brittany's not here today. Look around you. There, there's, there's, and again, they're not all here, and some are upstairs in the nursery. I'm telling you, this is a, a representation of what's happening. You can, see, you can be seated. So we saw a numeric addition come to the church, and then in 2022, this past year, uh, I feel like we saw, especially when we went through things like I am a church member and our This Is Home classes uh, that, by the way, will be starting up again at the end of February. We will be talking more about that next Sunday, just kind of a blurb and a promotion, But and I'm excited about it. If you weren't here through our first This Is Home, then you need to plan to join This Is Home uh, the next round. But uh, we saw people begin to stabilize. That numeric increase began, began to become the core and the very strength of our church, turn your neighbor right now and say, you're part of this thing. And, and turn to him and say, and you're important to this thing. And so with all of this and, and this collective kind of uh, growth and this, this collective um, process of thinking through the years, now we're coming to 2023. My wife and I will begin to pray, asking God's direction and, and asking for a theme or some, a word, something to kind of wrap our hands around, our minds around, uh, that what God wanted to do in this coming year and the vision, if you will, for the church. And in the scripture, there is a, there is a law that, that scholars have referred to as the law of first mention. Anybody remember what the law, I've said it before, but uh, do you remember what the law of first mention means? Anybody? It's a principle. The law of first mention, it's an important rule to follow in arriving at the correct meaning of passages and words in the Scripture. Basically, this principle states that the first time, somebody say the first time, the first time something is mentioned in Scripture, it carries with it a meaning that will be carried all through the Word of God. It will follow that first mention 
principle. Everybody understand kind of what I'm talking about here. For example, the first time Satan is mentioned in Genesis 3 and 1, he comes to Eve in the form of a subtle uh, voice, in the form of a serpent, and his characteristic that is mentioned is the word subtle. He's very subtle. And so all through the Bible, if you look, uh, the, the Scripture kind of identifies that the way Satan works is through subtle, crafty, deceptive measures, right? In, first, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and 3, Paul says, I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so that's, that's that subtle nature, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. It's carried through from Genesis all the way to the New Testament, that principle. The first time you see the concept of something like holiness or sanctification, the Bible describes it as the, it means to be set apart. It always means that from that point forward throughout the Scripture. In Genesis 2 and 3, the Bible says, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, set it apart. And from that point forward, Sanctification is a is is a pursuit of being set apart. Everybody understand what I mean? First time you see the Spirit of God mentioned in the Scripture, the Bible. It's a moving force. Somebody shout a moving force. It, it's a moving force that brings life out of it, it brings life out of death, and it brings light out of darkness. And and from that point forward, God's Spirit always does that same thing throughout the word of God. The Bible says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the, the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved. And can I just stop right here and tell you he's still moving? Oh, come on. I know it's Vision Sunday, and I said I was just going to talk for a minute, but could you just say amen, be an amen corner? I said he's still moving in this hour. But the point for all that is to tell you what I feel like the Lord said, and we're just going to use one word, but it means many things as you'll find out here in a minute. I feel like the word for our year, the vision that we need to wrap our minds around, both as individuals and collectively as the church body, is the word increase. Somebody shout increase. Somebody shout increase. As I mentioned, 2019, 20, 21, 22, 23, I'm telling you, God has been preparing us and building us and establishing us to see significant increase. And here's what I found. The first appearance of the word increase in your Bible, in the King James Version, appears during the great Genesis flood in Genesis 7 and 17. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth. And the waters increased and bear up the ark. And it was lifted up above the earth. Somebody shout increase. The first time our, he, our, our English word increase appears and is used in scripture, it is the Hebrew word in the original text. It's the Hebrew word rabach. Everybody say rabach. Amen. Go in the Hebrew class. Rabah, are you ready to understand what it means? I started reading through what that one, that one word means the following, and it's, I think, very powerful. Just, just bear with me. It means, the first point is, it means abundance. It means, secondly, to be in authority. It means to bring up. It means to continue. It means to enlarge. And when I started reading these definitions of the first appearance of increase in our Bibles, when I read the word abundance, I felt like the Holy Ghost speak to me and say, get ready, new life. This is going to be a year of the miraculous. You're going to see me move in an abundant measure. Come on, somebody. Anybody buy into this right now? I feel like the Holy Ghost is telling the church. We are not doing church as usual. It is not just going to be another year and we wonder well, what we get done. No, no. The Bible has declared to us that this word increase means something. And for us, I feel the Holy Ghost telling you, get ready. We are moving into an apostolic demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. And when I read be in authority, I felt like the Holy Ghost speak to me and say, remember Paul said pursue or seek after the gifts. I am granting to the church that are hungry for it a spiritual authority. And you're going to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, faith and miracles and words of wisdom and words of knowledge and healing. Come on, somebody. I feel the Holy Ghost telling us, you better get ready. It's a year in it. 
When I read the words bring up, I felt the Holy Ghost prompt me to remind myself and remind the church it is important that we continue to teach and continue to mentor and continue to grow people. And so we're going to increase by bringing up. And then the word continue. I read that, Brother Carlos, and I felt the touch of heaven. The areas of living holy and our doctrinal distinctives and, and our belief in, the, in baptism and repentance and baptism in Jesus' name and the infilling and dwelling presence of the Holy Ghost speaking with other tongues and living a separated lifestyle. I felt the Holy Ghost say, this is a measure of increase. Continue to do. Continue to hold on to. Continue to believe in. Continue to walk faithful. And it said enlarge, and I felt just to write growing numerically there. I feel like it's a year of numeric increase. And then it said excel. It means it's, this one word means a lot for us. Rabach means to excel. It means to exceed. It means to be full of greatness or greater. It means to grow up. I wrote beside that when I read it. This is discipleship. And the Holy Ghost is reminding the church this is a year to deepen your commitment to being a disciple that makes disciples. Come on, we are called to be disciple makers. We are first called to be a disciple. We need to follow Jesus. We need to disciple ourselves. We need to be growing in the faith. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to lead somebody else to him. We need to share somebody else with what this word of God says. What is it? It's increase. It goes on to mean things like multiply and nourish and plenty. And then I like this. It even means this one word, rabach, means the process of time. And so I started reading further. I said, man, that's interesting. I wonder what other text, uh, uh, what other words maybe in the Hebrew for our one word increase. I found out there was a whole lot of Hebrew words for our one word increase. And so I found that the next Hebrew word that appears for our English word for increase is the Hebrew word paras. Somebody say paras. Not parrots, but paras. And it says in Genesis 30, 30, this Hebrew word appears. For it was little which thou hadst before I came, and it is now increased, parats, unto a multitude. I like that multitude thing, Brother Stephen. Multiple, multitude type increase. But I want you to understand something. When reading this, I'm reminded that this type of increase was the result of enduring some things. This word appears after Jacob has endured a season of process with Laban, his father-in-law. He had been lied to. He had been deceived. He had been tricked, and yet he stayed, and, and yet he pursued what his original promise was, Rachel. He accounts the favor of God here that has visited Laban because of his honoring his commitment to that man. It's Jacob saying, since I've been here, God has increased. Since I've been here, you've seen favor. And it hasn't just been a small increase. It's been an increase of multitudes. I feel a word for someone in this place. And I don't know exactly who it is. It's probably more than one. But I feel the Holy Ghost told me to tell you, you've been enduring some things. And sometimes in that time of endurance, you can start questioning God's favor. Has God forgotten about me? But I can tell you that the increase that comes as the result of faithful labor means, this word means, to break out. Come on, to spread abroad, to compel, to dispense to grow, to open, to press, to scatter. I'm feeling like somebody needs to hear. You've been enduring and something is about to break loose in your life. You've been enduring and God's about to allow it to, to be something that draws people, compels people to come. What is it about you that's different? It's an increase. It's a compelling increase. Somebody shout break forth. To break out. Anybody hungry for a breakout increase this year? Anybody been going through some things and you're ready for a breakout increase? 
How come you're just sitting there then? I said, are you ready for a breakout increase? Then act like it. Come on, tell God about it right now through a little testifying of praise. I'm ready for the increase, God. Increased into a multitude. I looked up that word multitude. You know what it means? It means abundance. It means all. Everything. Come on, what did I preach last Sunday? Everything. Let's try it again. Everything. Act like you don't listen to what I'm preaching. I'll re-preach it, my God. That's a good word, though. It wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt to re-preach it for some of you. Everything, all, and then some abundance. Excellent. It means greatly. It means huge. It means to be increased. It means more and more in number. Come on, somebody receive this today. It's time to expect God to restore and to bring favor everything and then some. And my journey continued to the path of biblical increase. The next Hebrew word that appears for our English word increase is the word tibua. Tibua means income. Oh, I knew I'd find somebody real quick in this increase. Be like, now we're talking, Pastor. It means to produce fruit, it means to produce gain, it means to produce revenue. I'm just going to tell you, I felt like the Holy Ghost is telling us, revealing through his word. Listen, it is for my people to see increase. In, I don't care what the world is doing. I don't care what the economy is doing. God said, I got a remnant. I'm going to protect If they'll be faithful to me, if they'll be faithful to me, come on, somebody. You need to hear that. You better be faithful. If they'll be faithful to me, there is an increase of income. There's an increase of revenue being produced. Listen, I know that eggs are like $12 a dozen or something crazy. I know, I know everything's blowing up, but God said I can still produce increase in your finance. Oh, somebody receive the word of God. The context of this verse, that Genesis 47 and 24, where that word appears, they're in a foreign land. It's a strange land. They're in Egypt, Brother Josh. And yet through Joseph's leadership, they have prospered. And again, process is here, introducing and producing increase. Remember what Joseph went through, the dungeon and being forsaken by his family and being forgotten by the baker and all these things. And process. So I want to tell you that what I'm talking about is not a magical, mystical, wishes granted kind of increase, but it is a reward of faithfulness. This is the increase I'm talking about is the result of a he must increase and I must decrease kind of lifestyle. Come on, we've got leaders in this church that have been faithful and I just feel the Holy Ghost telling us that the church, because of that faithfulness, has entered a season of increase. I don't see him in here. He's probably taking care of the offering. Brother Lyons, Sister Lyons, won't you stand? Brother Taylor's not in here. Go ahead and stand, Sister Lyons. Amen. Brother Josh, you guys, you, you folks stand. Some of our elders, some of our leaders. Kristen, you stand. And, and I could continue going on, but I'm going to stay here. Brother Lyons, come up and stand beside your wife. If you're near them, why don't you just reach out and lay hands on these that are around you? Because I promise you, every one of them have gone through some process. Come on, I'm talking about people that have been faithful in the face of adversity, but they remained and they stood. I'm talking about people that still come and they show up. And when they show up, they produce. Why? Because they believe in the power of God. And he's able to bring them through. And they believe in the word of God. That regardless of circumstance, faithfulness is required. I want you to pray for them right now and say, God, give them increase in their finance. God, give them increase in their health. God, give them increase in your favor. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. If you believe that, I want you to just clap your hands for a minute. trying to hurry, the next Hebrew word for our increase was the word sherats, 
and at me in Exodus chapter 1 and verse 7, the Bible says, and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly. That's the word there in the Hebrew, increased abundantly. Abundant increase is what we're talking about. Now, Brother Stephen, this appears right before the Bible says there arose a Pharaoh that knew not Joseph. I'm trying to help you understand. I'm not talking about some name and claim it. Blab it and grab it. I'm talking about biblically principled growth and harvest. There are going to be some folks that don't like your increase. But we need to remember, man, I feel the touch of heaven, that even in seasons of adversity, God can bring increase. Adversity won't stop you. Even in tribulation, you're going to grow exceeding mighty. That's what the word means, exceeding mighty. Come on, somebody. It says it right there in the text. And they waxed exceeding mighty. Why? They were increased abundantly. Why? Because they stood and they were faithful in a foreign land. And also, God did this as preparation. God knows what he's doing, folks. Come on, he knew what was about to befall them, but his timing is perfect. He'll bring the necessary growth to endure every hardship before it even gets there. And it might eventually lead you through some Red Seas and through some wilderness moments, but he's bringing increase nonetheless. And I like what else that word means, and I don't don't know but to tell you what I felt impressed to say when I read it. That word, sherats, means to wriggle. How many of you ever been uncomfortable? You itching or you're hurting? Or how many of you ever had a back injury and you cannot find, you're sitting down and you, it's an uncomfortable thing. It means to wriggle. But guess what the other definition is for that same word? It means to abound. Pastor, what are you trying to say? Paul said in Philippians 4 and 12, I know both how to be abased, uncomfortable, and I know how to abound. See the increase. And then he said, everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Paul, how in the world can you do that? I'll tell you how verse 13 is very familiar. I can do all things. I am preaching here today and y'all sleeping. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Some people ain't going to like your increase, but God's preparing you nonetheless. And God may seem in the middle of the, uh, of the uncomfortable. It may seem that way. It may feel uncomfortable, but God's still going to abound. His glory is still going to be with you. His favor will still be upon you. The next increase we see in the Bible is the word parach. It appears in Exodus 23 and 30. And it verifies what I just said, that despite the haters, there's this promise related to increase. He said to the people of Israel, by little and little, I'll drive them out before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. Come on, he's already given the land to this people. He's he's led Israel to promise. And he assures them there's coming an increase. And hear me, because we're here. We have experienced this over the last 10 years. He says it might feel like little and little at first. But there is an until coming. By little and little until thou be increased. And what that word means in the Hebrew is to bear fruit, to bring forth, to be fruitful, and to grow. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. New Life Tabernacle, God is telling the church, I know it's been little and little for a time, but now it's a season of increase. The until increase is upon the church in this hour. And it isn't just for the church as, a, as an entity. Listen to me. I like the usage, the very same word. Somebody say, the same word. Parah. It appears in Psalm 105 this way. And verse 23. Israel also came into Egypt. 
and Jacob sojourned there. That's, that's process in the land of Ham. But watch. Verse 24 says, and God increased his people greatly. Not just talking about the church. I'm talking to individuals right now. Greatly. And you know what that word greatly means? Increase I already defined for you, but the word greatly that follows it. Sister Kate, you know what, it's, what it means? No, you don't because you ain't studied it. If you did, I would have been impressed though. That word greatly means, and I like this. You're going to have to bear with Come on, somebody preach with me right here. That word greatly means far and fast. Come on, the devil has told you because you've had to wait a while and you've gone through some testing and you might have seen others grow and you didn't feel like you were growing and you've wondered when is it ever going to break. I feel the Holy Ghost telling the church and telling some people, when I start increasing, I can take you far and I can do a quick work. I can do it far and I can do it fast. Why? Because God said it's an until increase. I hate to sound like T.D. Jakes, but get ready, get ready, get ready. Somebody better understand what I'm preaching to you. Get ready for some growth. Get ready for some revival. Get ready for some increase. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, man, I wish I had time. I got to move on. I'm trying to get through this because we got to get to the New Testament. The next appearance of the Hebrew word used for increase is the word tarbif. And it means percentage or bonus in addition to principle. That's in the Bible. Some of you need to make it a prayer. Listen to me. Let me talk to you real for a second. For God to help you in this area. And seeing a percentage increase. Listen to me. You need to kind of go through and figure out what your attendance has looked like. And ask the Lord God. Help me be faithful. I want to increase my attendance. Even if it's by one percentage point, increase it. If you gain 25% of the time, come 26. Actually, if you're only coming 25%, you need to bump it up a lot. I love you. Hallelujah. Percentage, whatever you're given, test God a little bit this year. Why? It's a year of increase. I'm not talking about playing the lottery here, folks. I'm telling you, if you hear this and you say, you know what, God's trying to tell the church it's a year of increase, maybe, just maybe, I want to get involved in this. If I want to see revenue grow, this is not a church where you hear me talk about money a lot. But let me tell you something. There is biblical principle that if you give, he gives. And we don't give to get. We give because it's right. But there is the promise and there is the faithfulness of God. You simply cannot outgive God. And so now we're talking about the impetus, the impetus is on us. It's time for us to do a little increasing. Hey, I knew I had everything going good and I talked about that. But whoa. Give of your treasure, increase it. Give of your time, increase it. Give of your talent, increase it. I'm guaranteeing you Sister Destiny is going to be blessed because she's given a little extra of her talent. See, you all want me to preach about your increase, but when it comes time for us to increase a little bit, uh, let's get back to the good stuff, the far and fast stuff, you know. Here's the point. I felt... Let me just talk to the church for a minute as the church because we have a sacrifice Sunday. Pledge Sunday is coming up at the end of the February. Sacrifice or, or blessed Sunday is what we call it is coming up at the 1st of May where we give over beyond our tithe and offering. We give a special offering to the Lord and we use it for many things. You're seeing much of it. And outreach, we've given to missions. Last year we gave, uh, what was it, ten five thousand dollars $5,000 to to a mission in Cambodia, the church. I'm going to show it to you on Pledge Sunday. It's an absolute beautiful building that we were a part of grow, uh, building throughout the churches of this area, uh, giving to, toward that mission. We give to cars for missionaries. 
We give to, to children's programs. I mean, all th- this offering takes care of that for the rest of the year in May. Last year, we pledged to do all of that and then do our best to endeavor to keep 20000 in our savings for the future growth of the church. We had 22000 in savings at the end of the year. That's growth. That's increase. Trust me. That's increase. Because there have been some years we didn't have nothing in the savings. You talk about faith. My wife and I have lived a lot by faith in our days. But my point for this, for that saying that is this. This year I felt like the Lord challenged me to, 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 to challenge the church. And we'll get more into this so I can't spend time here. But this percentage of increase on principle, that word definition that appears there for that Hebrew word. I felt the Lord say, I want you to begin to challenge the people. To direct our focus on giving to paying bonus on our principle for this building. I'd love, we have a 15-year term. I'd love to see us pay this off in 10 years or seven years. Or if the Lord permits and we give and we. D- Brother Eric, you shut this off. It gets tight when we start talking about money. You can tell by the way my wife and I live, we, this ain't about us. It's about growing the kingdom. It's about the purpose of the mission. And I happen to believe this church is important to this city. And if we're going to grow, it's going to have to also be in this area. Why? Because it's preparation for the next level. If we just want to be here, then we can take our time. But here's the deal. If we're, if we're, blow, we're busting at the seams because of additional growth, we're going to need to take the next unit. And the next unit. What am I saying? I'm talking about preparation for the next level. I'm talking about being ready to be able to step out and pursue more territory. Can I just stop right here and tell you we need that? And it's going to be part of our prayer list that I closed today with. We need to, we need more space. We had my, our, my office that we used to host our youth on Sunday morning was busting at the scenes. We had 17 people in that office. I'm telling you, we need it. Kids' life, we need it. Nursery, we need it. That's a good thing. But we've got to be part of the solution for increase. I don't have time today. But there's another word, increase, God's reward of faithfulness talked about all the adversity, and it says, then I'll give you rain in due season. The land shall yield her increase. And it goes on talking about all the blessing of God. And he says, and five of you shall chase a hundred, and hundred shall put ten thousand to flight, and enemies shall fall by this. We've heard that a hundred and and, and, a thousand, ten thousand. We've heard that all our life. It's related to increase, folks. God says to the people of Israel, for I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. But all that preceded that, God was talking about what Israel was doing. It's a you shall and then I will formula. All of these things God talked about their faithfulness and then he said, for I will give you rain for increase. For I will have respect to you. For I will drive out your enemies. For I will multiply you. You hear this preacher. I feel it so powerfully in this moment, in this season. God is saying, if you will, then I'm about to do something abundantly above what you ask and what you think. I will give the rain for the season. I got to stop. I got to stop. This is so good, though. I still got good stuff to talk about. Hallelujah. I'll save it for next Sunday. Everybody say, you shall. Stand with me. We'll finish it. 
next Sunday. Because we're getting to the New Testament. And there's some good stuff in there about increase. There's stuff in there. I feel like the Lord talking to me about prodigals returning. I feel like the Holy Ghost talking to us about the supernatural. So I'll tell you what, I won't do it today. Is it all right if we just use those cards next Sunday? Next Sunday, I want you to be thinking about this. I'm going to share with you 10 different prayer requests next Sunday that I want you as the church to make a part of your prayer list every day, if you can, weekly at the very least. I want us to begin agreeing together for these areas of increase. But I want you also, and we'll give it the card to you, I want you to be thinking about next Sunday, I want you to come in with a prayer of increase for your life in 23. It could be two, three, ten things, whatever. And on that same card, there's a slot beside it that says my miracle or answer of increase. Here's the point. I want us to begin begin praying. Because what we often fail to do is chronicle every answer. Because when we start thinking back, in the moment it feels like nothing's happening. But man, when you get five years down the road and you look back and say, my God has been up to something. I want you to do that this year. I want you to chronicle it better. I want you to pray. Sister, this is perfect timing, actually. Sister Brittany is going to share with you a testimony next Sunday. And it fits right in with this. I want you to pray, whatever that prayer of increase is. And then I want you to start recording, writing down when you see God answer that prayer of increase. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Why don't we come to the front together right now? Just as the body of Christ. I'll get into it next week, but you know what? Another part of increase, it's very plain in Scripture, is unity. It has to be based upon, built upon unity. Hallelujah. Some of you may already know what that prayer is. I want you to come with that prayer right now. God, this is my prayer of increase for 2023. I want you to come pray and ask God. Here's, I want you to ask God today, God, help me increase my faith, God, to see the miraculous. Would you just lift your hands right now all across the building and talk to the Lord for a minute? God, this is a biblical promise. God, pastor hasn't got up today and just talked about some, some mystical God granting wishes. No, no, this is a biblical pathway. Literally a road of increase from Genesis to Revelation. Woo! God, I believe in your favor being upon me. I reject the lie of the enemy that that's some mystical message. No, 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 no. Increase is for us and this is the time. This is the year. Hallelujah. Would you go ahead and make some consecrations right now, God? I'm going to do my part. Lord, my prayer life hasn't been what it should. I'm going to increase that. Lord, my giving, I haven't been faithful in my tithing. I'm going to increase that. God, there's been too many Sundays that I've missed being in the house of God. I'm going to increase that, God. Lord, there's area of talent that I have that I haven't designated to the cause of the kingdom. I'm going to increase that, God. Lord, I've been a little stagnant in the area of discipleship. I'm going to increase that, God. I'm going to lead somebody. I'm going to disciple somebody. Come on, disciple my family, God. Help me to lead them. Disciple my friends and co-workers. God, help me to lead them to you. Oh, that's it. There's a beautiful spirit of the Lord right here.